Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on my tutorials on quantum statistics. This is video number 50 and it's part of a subsection on applications of quantum statistics and in this subsection we're on video number 8, the solid angle or the steradian. I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstutorials.com. So in the last number of videos what I've been doing is uh, I basically added videos I'd done years ago in because they fit into, at that, they fit into that point of my uh, tutorial series. But I want to talk about the solid, the solid angle or the steradian. And in order to do that, you need to have seen my video on polar or spherical coordinates. And that was video number 43. So we need that in order to continue here. So this is another topic which scared the life out of me, if I'm honest, when I was first introduced to it. But I think it's a lot easier than at least it was made out to me. So I'm going to try and explain what a solid angle is. So bottom line up front, it is the two-dimensional angle in three-dimensional space and you're saying that means nothing to you. Don't worry it's a lot easier than even that sounds. So I'm sure there is something you do have, there is an analogous uh, quantity which you, you uh, should be able to understand and it's called the radian. So think about what the radian means. The radian is a way we define angles Okay, so it's kind of like these one-dimensional angles in two-dimensional space. So this would be the two-dimensional angle in three-dimensional space. But how do we define the radian? Well, we define the radian as the arc length over the radius. So this is arc S, the arc length over the radius. So we would say that theta is approximately S over R. And a circle has two pi radians. It has two pi radians. And you might say, well, why does it have two pi radians? Well, think about it. If you integrate s over a circle, well, the, the circumference of the circle is two pi r. Divided by r gives us two pi radians. So in a circle, there are two pi radians. Okay? That's where we integrate across the whole circle. So what I'm trying to say to you here is that the solid angle, or the stir radian, is just the radian up into a higher, one higher dimension. So let's try and consider the higher dimension. So this time we have a cone instead of an arc. So the cone looks something like this. Now my drawing, by the way, is reasonably poor at best. So instead of having an arc length, what we actually have is an area. Okay? The radius is unchanged, like so. But this time, the angle can go one of two ways. It can go this way. or it can go this way. All right? So we call the angle capital omega. Okay? And that's the that's the placeholder we give. So the last time we gave theta, now we give omega. Now, so we said it's the two dimensional uh, it's it's we'll say just generalizing the radian to a higher dimension. So remember, the radian theta was equal to s over r. So this time it should make perfect sense that we're talking about the area s over the radius uh, r squared because this time we have two angles. So this is the area this time and not the arc length. So where do we go from here? Well think about a sphere. We'll think about the, the solid angle of a sphere. Well what's the surface area of a sphere? Well it's going to be 4 pi r squared if you integrate it across all space. We divide it by r squared so this time there are four pi radians in, uh, there are four pi, excuse me, stir radians in a sphere. So there are two pi radians in a circle, there are four pi stir radians in a sphere. Now how do we, okay, that's all well and good. So you might say any time we're talking about a sphere, we know that it's four pi stir radians, and we add in this factor of four pi. Well, who cares? Well, the reason this is useful is because we're able to talk about volume elements, just not necessarily spherical, uh, well they're actually to be honest they're usually spherical volume elements. But if you went back to my video on spherical or polar coordinates we had this volume element which we called, I called it dl sub x, dl sub uh, theta and d, or we'll say dl sub r, dl sub theta and dl sub uh, phi. Okay, but if we're talking about n space or whatever it could be dn sub x, dn sub y, 
D N sub Z. It doesn't really matter. It just you you pick the space, and it's that's what it is. So where we spoke about polar coordinates, this volume element turned out to be let's say r squared times sine of theta, theta excuse me, and we had d. Um, what do we? What do we? We had d r d theta d phi is what we had. Okay, but if we're talking about n space, we could define this volume element as n squared sine theta d n d theta d phi. Okay, that's where we're using, you know, and we're often involved in n space, especially when we're dealing with density of state, the density of states. Now, finally, we need to go back to the, the definition of our steradian. Uh, so it's the the area of our of our um, it's the area okay divided by r squared and that we call it one steradian. So how do we put this into some sort of differential form, which or integral form, which we can therefore integrate? How do we get the infinitesimal volume element? Uh, the, sorry, excuse me, the infinitesimal area element. Now this is the infinitesimal volume element. So what we're trying to do now is get the infinitesimal area element. But if you remember in the last video, I said what happens when r is constant? Well, what's the infinitesimal area when r is constant? Well, it's going to be r squared times sine theta d theta d phi r hat. That's the infinitesimal area element. So that means the solid angle is going to be equal to r squared sine of theta d theta d phi r hat divided by r squared. So in general we can say that omega that that our solid angle is equal to sine theta d theta d phi in the r hat direction. Okay? So I'm sure you've seen that. And that's how we're going to integrate lots of our functions in order to get the the, the, the solid angle. So that's what the that's what our solid angle is in spherical coordinates. Alright? So I think it's pretty straightforward. So we're talking about we go from a radian in one say the one dimensional angle in two dimensional space to the steradian, which is the two dimensional angle in three dimensional space. And we talk of a solid angle. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also click on universityphysicstutorials.com.